glad you made it back while I was here. I had, uh, I had just gone to the hospital to, uh, to see Robin, and, and they said you were there. Yeah, I was there for a while. How's she doing? She's still troubled. She's very troubled. Pardon me? Well, um, well, um, may I join you here? You know, uh, uh, I, I needed to talk to you about some things about the dance here because it's coming up real soon. And, and you had talked to me about a song, uh, My Funny Valentine. How, what's everybody... this? Songs and dancing. How do you expect me to think about such foolishness? Anna's gone and she could be dead, so please, don't talk to me about that. Huh? Sure. It's about Bill Watson. Trouble? Oh, no, his vital signs are okay. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, and he seems to be tolerating the new medication very well. That's even better. Yeah. But there's something weird. Candy Striper came out of his room and said that he was screaming in pain, that it was terrible. And when I went in, he denied it. And then he asked me to take his restraints off. No, they stay on. The man's afraid of surgery. If we let him go free, he may leave the hospital and die on us. Would you wait about an hour and then go back in there and see if he'll sign that consent form? Thank you. Done. Is he depressed or what? It seems like it, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm going to guess what I heard is true. What did you hear? Well, Tony slept here all night, so... I'm gonna guess that he's having trouble at home. That is an awful thing to say. Well, that's a rumor. Well, that's why it's so awful. A rumor is not a fact, Amy. Besides, where Tony Jones decides to sleep isn't anybody's business, especially yours. How dare you spit a rumor like that? I didn't spread it. I heard it. Then why repeat it, especially when you don't know the facts? I wish you would check things out before you go around shooting your mouth. Still here? Yes, I'm still here. I know what you're going to tell me. I assumed as much. Surgery. Yeah. Risky surgery. You've been around hospitals too long. When? I told Tony to schedule it for tomorrow morning. Well, one question. As many as you like. Why the rush? Do you really want to know? I asked. All right, I'll tell you. At our son's wedding, I want to be able to walk down that aisle with his mother on my arm. If there's a chance of that, I'll take it. And you really would, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, Steve, I love you for that. I love you for so many things. <laughs> like what? Like what? Ah, uh, let's see. Well, when we were young, about the same age as Tom and Simone are now, I loved you for your, your optimism and your ambition and your courage, the way you face the future without fear. Of course, now I realize that you were as fearful as the rest of us, but you wouldn't let it stop you. <laughs> And then when we got a little older, even when we had problems, and we had big problems, I could still see those same qualities. I loved your willingness to work in our marriage. The courage it took in the face of what seems almost impossible. You deserve credit for that. Oh, no. Without you and your courage, I couldn't have done it. <laughs> There's that word again, courage. Well, I've seen it when a marriage has been threatened. Uh, your work, our lives, the lives of others, this hospital, even the whole city. And the older I get, the more I see it and the more I value it. There's that word again, old. Well, that's not a dirty word. It's not even a harsh word for someone with courage. Because it's only when you're old you realize what's really important. It's not the past and it's not the future. It's right now, this minute. And it will never come again. As we speak, it goes. And we're on to the next minute. Life is that fragile. 
that precious. It wants us to treasure it and to take care of it and to make the most of it. That's why I want this surgery. And that's why I want you to have it. My dear, I am not going to be in that operating room tomorrow. But my love and my prayers will be Talk to you. You might mouth it all over town. How dare you, Doctor? I would like to have a word with you. It's regarding a patient. What are you trying to do, Amy? I am trying to talk to you, and the lounge will be just fine. Nurse Arrington, Nurse Conklin, report to Doctor Rudy's office. Nurse Arrington, Nurse Cochran, report to Dr. Moody's office. I listened to you in the cafeteria. Now you can listen to me here. I had nothing to do with spreading the rumor about Tony Jones or anybody else all over the place, and I resent the fact that you said I did. Will you keep your voice down, I please? am not shouting. You are, too. I am not. I am defending my honor, which obviously no one else around here, especially you, is going to do. Now, for your information, Celeste is the one who spread the rumor that Tony has spent the past two nights in this hospital. And if she already got it all over town, then she actually beat my record. Well, now you see what happens when... I am not finished. I am so hurt. I am so hurt and so upset and mad that you assume that I am the source of all of the gossip here. I'm sorry. I guess it was my own guilt that caused me to jump to conclusions. I was worried about Lucy and Tony, too. And admit, I actually have earned my reputation. You know, but when I was a kid, I mean, that was the only way I could get any attention. You don't know my sister, Laura. I mean, you don't know what it's like being Laura's little sister. Everybody loved her so much, and I always thought that she was so much prettier and so much smarter than I was. You were? Wait, I, I, was, I was what? Amy, I, I'm confused. You were wondering about Tony and Lucy. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was going to ask you. Well, no, what were you saying about your sister? It doesn't matter. What matters is you're the one that should have the facts straight before you open your mouth. You're right. I'm sorry. If you hear a rumor spread around here that I'm crazy about you, you know where it came from. Time for this? No, I have to go see Bill Watson. So do I. Amy, I'm really sorry. So am I. One more. I have to tell you something. About you, your sister, anything? No. No. It's it's there's something. It's about Bill Watson. What? Well, there's something about I. No, I've learned my lesson, and I'm not going to say a word till I have all my facts straight. Dr. O'Connor, Dr. Jones from 748 Staff. That's Bill Watson. Let's go. Dr. Jones from 748 Staff. I want to speak to you, Jerome. Yes, Lavery here. Don't give me a hard time, man. I said I want to speak to him. But what time tomorrow? Duke, 
Look, I understand. I mean, we all get a little uptight every now and then. I, I certainly do this time of year. Valentine's Day. Yeah. I, I know this is a bad time of the year for you. Oh, yeah, but I, I just refuse to let it throw me. And, and that's why I want to do a good job for you at the Valentine's Day dance. Thank you. I appreciate it. As for me being uptight, yeah, I am. You've got to understand, though, the police department of Port Charles. Sean, Tiffany, Felicia, not to mention Robert, well, they're, I mean, they're all running around in circles, getting absolutely nowhere. Meanwhile, Anna's being held captive by some mad man. Look, you don't have to explain anything. Or, uh, and certainly, you don't have to ask me to forgive you. Believe me, I know. The medication isn't working. Nurse, I need 100 milligrams of Demerol for the pain. Please. Mr. Watson, you have to reconsider about the operation. There's no question. It's absolutely necessary. Oh, Let's no, face it, we could lose them. You're not going to cut me off. Tonight, Alan falls for Darlene when she lends him a shoulder to cry on on head of the class. <laughs>